Hello everyone and welcome back to the Belgian Beer Brothers channel. It's a dark and gloomy day today uh, and it's been a while since we had a proper Belgian beer. So I thought let's go into the cellar and dig up a nice warming strong dark beer to suit this day. And well I came up with a pretty cool limited edition barley wine by the Van Steenberghe brewery in Ertvelde, a small town between Ghent and Bruges. Today we are having the exclusive Guldendraak Cuvée Prestige Bourbon. In 2019 Van Steenberghe saw the success of barrel aged beers and they happened to make a beer that lends itself perfectly for barrel aging. So yeah, why not have some fun, right? I personally would have expected them to barrel age their quadruple, but after some research and experiments, uh, they decided to go forward with the Guldendraak Classic. Now, no worries, uh, despite being a triple on paper, because it contains three times the malt bill, it's still a 10.5% ABV ruby red dark beer um, that won no less than 25 awards all over the world. With hints of caramel and coffee from the roasted malts, it's an ideal aging beer, so barrel aging should give it that little bit extra. And we're here to find out. Now they soon flew in uh, some barrels from different bourbon and whiskey distilleries, which have been used exactly twice. In the case of this uh, bourbon version, the barrels were used first by Old Forester and then by Early Times Distillery. And for the the other version, the Lafroic version, uh, those were used by Jim Beam and Lafroic, of course. After tweaking the recipe in 2020, the first batch of the Gildendraak Cuvée Prestige was born. Um, the beer was aged in these barrels for eight weeks before bottling, uh, and they had uh, 6,372 bottles of the bourbon version and 9,162 bottles of the Lafroic version. Now, I believe that James from Rampant Lion Reviews got uh, his hands on one of those Lafroig bottles. So if I find the video, I'll put a link up here somewhere. But both versions were re-fermented in the bottle with a unique strain of wine yeast as well, which is uh, more accustomed to highly alcoholic environments than its beer cousin and releases uh, some different esters upon fermenting. So yeah, that should be quite innovative. In 2022 they made a second batch of the Cuvée Prestige bourbon and Lafroig versions and they added a third version aged for 30 weeks in Madeira barrels as well. What I have here today is that second batch of the Guldendraak Cuvée Prestige bourbon. So basically the same beer but from 2022 and with a slight adjustment in the recipe. Namely the same kind of barrels were used uh, 190 liter barrels first used by the Old Forester distillery and then by the Early Times distillery in the US but this time they aged the beer not for 8 weeks but for 16 weeks before again re-fermenting this with that wine yeast. Now I went to the cellar for the beer and I went up on the attic for the glass. This is a very old Guldendraak glass. You might recognize this tulip shape from yeah, classics like Duvel and uh, La Chouf. With the Viking Boat Dragon logo up on here. These days they have uh, smaller rounder glasses uh, called Dragon Eggs. Um, but I don't have one of those. And I think for this beer that this glass will be more suitable. I can tell that this is a very old glass because there are no measurements on this. And I do believe that that is... Uh, obligatory since yeah like at least 20 years about this bottle you can see that we have a hanging label here and apart from that we have a blank bottle this label does hold all the info that we need it is tacked to the bottle on the back but what does this uh, label say and i'm gonna keep this label um, the lot number, which kind of beer it is, the ABV, the aging time, uh, which barrels they used, 
first and second use, the content of the barrel and the number of bottles. Now, these bottles aren't numbered, but this is, well, one of those 6,372 bottles. On the back, they also have a huge amount of information. Um, yeah, basically what beer it is, why and how they did this. And pretty much what I just told you. Uh, the beer is re-fermented in the bottle. Uh, so I kept it laying down, but I put this in the fridge, uh, well, yesterday evening. Um, because I wanted all that yeast and all that sediment to go down and not interfere with, well, with me. There we go. Also, a nice little detail is that the brewmaster actually put his wax seal on each and every one of these labels. The golden dragon is upon there. Very nice detail. Ooh. Ooh, that's already very nice. Now, to get your hands on this beer, it is sold out at the brewery. Uh, it is actually only sold at one place, well, many places, but one uh, chain. Uh, and Kolrad, Kolrad in Belgium, the supermarket chain, has the exclusive contract to distribute this beer. I do believe that they're like 16, 17, 18 bucks per, per bottle. And we are going to find out in a minute whether that is worth it. Now I am pouring this quite carefully. Like I said, a lot of sediment. And of course, I am gonna cap off this bottle. I like the invention of these caps, by the way. Usually I invite friends to finish off the rest of this bottle, but if they have no time, um, well, I just cap it off and it stays good for about two or three days, uh, which is quite all right. So, a lot of condensation on the glass, which makes the beer appear hazy, but it is not. It is, well, it is medium hazy, but it's relatively clear. I do have the feeling that this beer um, changed color a bit while aging on those wooden barrels. Uh, I remember this beer to be slightly, I wouldn't say lighter or darker, but less intense in color. So the beer probably took some of the tannins from the wood. It is a nice, actually a, a reddish amber color, which is pretty nice. Uh, also some orangey beige foam, quite large bubbles, uh, but also some thick foam. Very nice. Ooh. Yeah, that's a lot of barrel. Uh, I already get a lot of um, yeah, vanilla actually uh, from the wood, but that's to be expected. They are quite fresh barrels. Smells slightly creamy as well. Um, and I do get a lot of dried fruit in there too. I get a lot of raisins. Raisins, dates, uh, a tiny hint of toffee. So yeah, that's nice as well. And I did say toffee, not coffee, because uh, I'm not getting the coffee yet. Okay, let's have a taste. I'm very curious now. Okay, as expected, very woody. That is very present and pretty much the very first thing that we, we taste. Um, tastes a bit less intense than it smells. Um, but all the components are there. We do have the dried fruits, we do have a lot of raisins, some grapes actually. 
um, a lot of vanilla, a lot of wood, um, also slightly astringent. So I wouldn't say sour, but this, this tiny astringent bit uh, is in there probably from the tannins, from the woods. Like I said, it's a rather uh, young barrel, only twice used. So not much of a surprise there, um, which is a good thing, by the way. That smell is very, very intense. Yeah, tastes absolutely lovely. I also do taste the, the base beer through there. Um, I also get, how should I say this? Well, it is highly carbonated, which is uh, a bit of a surprise to me for a beer that's been aged on, on wooden barrels for 16 weeks. But of course, that's probably the product of that re-fermentation in the bottle. Even though a wine yeast is not very well known for producing a lot of CO2. Um, well, the beer already had CO2 and that wine yeast probably boosted that a little bit. Um, because I do feel that it's a very fine bubble, uh, more like a champagne yeast actually. Also, what I do find is that the aftertaste is extremely pleasant. Um, you do get the beer, you do get a bit of CO2. It's slightly boozy, but not in a disturbing manner. And yeah, it's like uh, a blanketing of flavor, but it's not extreme, it's not harsh. It's actually very, very pleasant. It just lingers on. Um, so I think that this beer would pair lovely with um, with some wild, some game, uh, with some heavier flavors. I think uh, for a barbecue, and I don't mean uh, drinking throughout the entire barbecue, but I do mean the the marinated, uh, herby, herb heavy dishes. And actually another nice surprise is the mouthfeel. It does have a nice full warm mouthfeel, but again, it's um, like exactly on point. It's not sticky, it's not harsh, it doesn't linger on too long. Um, yeah, so I think this is a very well brewed beer. Uh, I haven't had the chance to try the first batch which only aged for eight weeks uh, but tasting this um, I think that yeah this should would, would have been intentional um, so except for that really really uh, heavy smell I think this is an ideal beer and I am actually inclined to give this well at least a four let's call it a 425 even because this is, this is very well brewed, very lovely, lovely taste, uh, great uh, mouthfeel, and it's, it hits exactly all those spots that you want from a beer like this. And I do think that if I uh, pit this against the Duvel Barrel Aged or the um, Schuper Zot uh, Winter from at Nest and, and such, that this is absolutely not worse or, or anything. Um, maybe even slightly better now of course at this price point um, funny that I think about this but I do think that at Nest is under 10 bucks and I do think that the Duval barrel aged is like 25 bucks so with 17 or 18 bucks a pop uh, yeah this is ideal so as usual uh, I'm gonna leave it at that if you like this video Tap that thumbs up, let me know down in the comments. Uh, same goes for if you have any questions or remarks. I would love to hear about your experiences with this beer or this brewery. Uh, if you want to see more, subscribe, hit the bell icon and you'll be the first to know whenever I upload something, which should be every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 6 p.m. And if you want to support this channel, just share a video somewhere and yeah, make this community a bit bigger. Uh, 
also a lot of new subscribers this week so thanks to each and every one of you and also everyone who was already subscribed um yeah couldn't do this without you guys so see you guys in the next video cheers <laughs>